So in this video, I'm going to show you how to create a pivot table in R that has subtotals and grand totals. So with that in mind, let's head over to R Studio. So if you want to follow along, there's a link to the data set in the description below and also a notepad with all the script that I'm going to show in this video. The first thing you want to do is load in the data set. I'm loading it in using read Excel and having the data set saved in my documents folder. If you have your data set saved anywhere else, I have a link in the description below for a video that shows you how to import Excel files from any folder. So first thing, we are now going to load in read Excel and then the file, like I said, I'm loading in the XLS file that I've got here and the sheet is equal data because that's what it's called. But if you have this saved in your documents folder, this will work automatically. So if we just run that now, so now that's run, we can check the table. And as we can see, there's some NAs in there. So we want to change those to zero. So to do that, what you need to do is do what your table name is. And then in square brackets, you put in is NA, which is basically again, is it NA? And then throughout the whole of your data set, which is the same name here, and then close bracket, close square bracket, and then equals zero. It can be anything you want to put in there, but I'm going to change it to zero. So if I run this now, we can see it's now showing zero under those NAs. So to do the pivot with the subtotals and grand total, we now need to convert that Excel file into a data.table file. Now to do that, we need to install the package data.table and then also import it. So if we install and import, I've already installed it. So I'm going to click no. Now that's loaded in, we can now convert our Excel file into a data.table file. And we do that by pointing what we're going to be calling the new table. I'm going to call it the same table. So it overwrites it just so I don't get too many tables pulling up over on the side here. And then you do as dot data dot table and then in brackets or data set that you want to convert into that format. So if we run that, we now have that converted. It doesn't change the layout of the table. As you can see, still the same table. It's just changed how it is formatted. So now that's formatted we can use another function within data.table called cube. And what this will allow us to do is to pick out the columns that we want to use and then also aggregate it by the sum of new cases in this case here, which is what I'm going to call that column. So your column is called new cases and then equals some new cases. And then I want location, year and month. So if I run that now, I'll get a new table called this one. And if I run, you see it here. And then as I said, for the aggregation of location, year, month. So now we've done that, what we want to be able to do is now make it into a proper pivot table with the columns being the month, but then also create subtotals and grand total. Now to do this, use another function within data.table and it's called dcast. And then how that works is you set out with data.table and then colon colon dcast. I'm now going to call it a new table called pivot, which is why then I've got there the arrow and the hyphen. And then after dcast, you'll then have what the table was called that you've just named. So this one here with cube at the end, and then I'm doing the layout. So the layout is location plus year. And what that means is that I'm going to have location and year as the main aggregation of the rows. And then for the column, I'm going to use the months. And then what happens here is and then that'll be assigned for all new cases. So what you'll see once I run this, you'll then have a table that has months across the top. And then there you'll see some NAs under location and year. And what the NAs that you see here now are grand total because it's on the location side. And then year is the subtotal. So the subtotal of the years for everybody. So if we would go down to say Argentina here, we can see for 2020 and 2021, the aggregation total is that amount there. And that's how you can see what the subtotal of that particular location is for those years. And then you can see what the grand total is for everything here. And then also the grand totals for 2020 and the grand totals for 2021. Now for grand totals, you'll want those at the bottom of the table and you want to rename these NAs to be grand total and subtotal for here. And then also we want grand total as the column name up here 
And then also we want to be able to move the columns around so they're in order because as we can see all the months are in alphabetical and we also want to be able to shorten the months because it looks more visually pleasing when you have months with just the three letters. So if we go back we now need to install dplyr which will allow us to do all those things I just said we need to do. If we do install package dplyr and then load in the package we can now start cleaning up our table. So the first thing we want to do is move those NAs that are going to be the grand totals to the bottom of the table. And to do this, we use pivot and then pipe arrange and then open bracket row sums and then is NA within brackets because that's what we want to find and then select which column we want to do. And then what this will do, this will then move those NAs to the bottom of the table. And I'm using it to overwrite the current table, which is called pivot. So keeping the minimal amount of tables I've got down here. So just as a reminder, NA is there. But then once we run this, it's now going to move them to the bottom. So if we run and then go back to our pivot, those NAs under location are no longer there because now they are all the way at the bottom. There they are. So. We now have those at the bottom, but it's still called NA. So now we want to change those NAs to grand total. So to change those NAs to grand total, what we want to do is then set what our table name is. And then within square bracket open, we then need to put in C to state the column that we're going to be looking at. And then we want to point to what it is that we're looking for. In this case, is it an NA within that table under that location? And then we want to change if it does find NAs, to grand total under the column location. So if we run that now and then go to the bottom of our table, we will see those NAs have now changed to grand total. And now we want to do the same with the subtotals under year. And it's exactly the same logic. All you do is set what your table name is within square brackets. We then put what the column is. And then within square brackets again, we need to state what we want to change, which in this case is NA within that particular column under that table and then change it to subtotal. So if we run that now, we'll see the NAs change to subtotal under year, just like that. So now we've got those tidied up. Now we want to rename the column names because at the moment we have year, location year, NA, which we want to be grand total, and then all the months to be only three letters long. So we can see here we've got location, year, and then I've changed it to grand total. So then that will change the NA to grand total. And then all the months into the three letter short version. So if I was to run this now, and then we went back, we now see they've been shortened and grand total is showing and no NA anymore. But that's still not a great format. So what we're going to do now is use select to actually change the order of the columns. So in this case, I've now put grand total all the way to the end and then put all the months in the order that they should be. I just run this now, as you can see, grand totals at the end here. And then we go back to our pivot table. We can now see location, year, and then all the months in the correct order, and then grand total. So now we have that table in the format that we wanted. We can now export that to Excel. Now to do that, you want to install the package called Write Excel and then import that package. And then for saving that to a file, all you need to do is type in write underscore XLSX and then in brackets the table that you want to convert into Excel. In this case, we know it's called pivot. So then you want to state where you want to save the file and then what you want to call the file with dot XLSX at the end as well, all within quotation marks. In this case, what I've done is created a folder within my documents folder called R for Excel users. And that is why this is R for Excel users there. Otherwise it would just be these backslashes with the name. But if you have this saved anywhere else, you can just use the whole route if it's saved to your C drive directly or anything like that. As long as it's the full route and the file name has .xlsx at the end of it, you can call it whatever you want. In this case, I've just called it PT for pivot table and then totals. And then if we was to run all of that, it will install import and export the data we can now see the excel file is in the format that we just created so i hope you found this video useful and if you did please give it a like because then it helps push out to more people and don't forget to subscribe so you get notified when i release any more videos but as you stay to the end 
why don't you carry on your analytical journey by checking out these videos over here. And as always, until next time.